We're here at the NRA National Farms Museum. I'm here with Doug Wicklund, Senior Curator. Doug, thanks for having us back here in the museum. You've got some wonderful treasures here with some great stories for Curator's Corner. Where do you want to start, sir? John, I'd like to go back to the Civil War because this gun has a story to tell that's amazing. This is one of those guns you can point to, you can say, wow, it's a Sharps carving. But this is a gun you can say, I know where this gun was November 7th, 1863. Wow. And that's something you can't do with every Civil War gun. So where was it? Well, the neatest thing is that it says so right on it where it was. Rappahannock Station, November 7th, 1863. Rappahannock Station is today Remington, Virginia. Still on the map. You can still drive past it. It's out there uh, past Culpeper in wow. uh, Northern Virginia. But this gun was there at the uh, second battle of Rappahannock Station. This is one of the guns that uh, helped define a nation. Wow, you were talking about holding history in your hand, Doug. It's a great gun, a 52 caliber Sharps. Basically, it's a uh, single shot, falling block, breech loader. And it's one of the guns that the uh, Union bought 100,000 of. This particular gun was probably made in 1862, and we know where it went to first, the first Massachusetts Cavalry. It's a gun that uh, helped set the Union Cavalry in first place for at least part of the war. Then the Spencer came along in 1864, and the Sharps wasn't quite as sought after, but this is still one of those guns that helped make American history. Oh, and boys, it's sought after now, I'll tell you what. So tell us, it, it started off uh, up, you said, in Massachusetts? Well, and, this one would have been issued to the 1st Massachusetts right. Cavalry, okay. probably in 1862. Okay. And they were stationed all up and down the East right. Coast. They were in almost every conflict uh, that the Army of Northern Virginia was involved in. So it ended up, and we know that, you know, who would have put that on the stock there? Well, 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 what's kind of neat is that uh, the carving that's on the stock, which is Rappahannock Station, November 7th, 1863, was the date of the second battle at Rappahannock Station. And that was one of the battles Robert E. Lee did not win. George Meade uh, took this one. It was where Lee got pushed back across the Rappahannock. About 2,000 Confederate casualties, but it was one of the times where the Union went on the offensive. They attacked an entrenched Confederate position. And they won. Wow. That didn't happen often. <laughs> <laughs> and it's 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 in uh, looking at like I guess you you tell me wonderful original condition. Well, for a gun that's uh, right now getting pretty close to 150 years old, this is a gun that uh, went through the rigors of the American Civil War. It's a gun that uh, rode on a uh, saddle with a sling swivel. It was suspended from a uh, uh, saddle bar. Imagine the stories this gun could tell if it could talk. I'll tell you what. Uh, now, now the neat thing is that something I can tell you about it is that uh, November 7th of uh, 1998, the year the museum opened, I was standing on the banks of the Rappahannock River at Rappahannock Station with this gun in my hand. I wanted to go back at least on the date when this gun helped make history. Oh man, that's great. So how did this come into possession of the museum? Well, it was kind of neat. I uh, happened to be wandering through uh, one of my favorite haunts in Gettysburg and uh, the shop had this for sale. Oh, wow. And I couldn't resist. It's one of those things for a curator to go to a place like that. It's a, it's a challenge. It's that's also a challenge for your pocketbook. <laughs> we let, we let just say, Doug, when you have a situation like the curator seeing that, it's like kid in the candy store. Absolutely. When you find a treasure like that. Well, so what went through your head? Can you remember back when you saw that up there in, in that shop? Well, they actually had it in a rack where you couldn't see the inscription oh, that was wow. carved. And so I was looking at every Sharps, I'm a Sharps aficionado, and I turned this one over and I saw that and I said, wow. It was almost as good as the time we found that John Brown Sharps. And I said, boy, this is a gun we need, it needs to be on display in the museum. It came here. Wow, That's they, talk about, they talk about the reveal in a reality television. For you, that was the reveal, it to was see that. Being able to see that, to think that some Civil War soldier sat down maybe next to a campfire oh. carving that. It's the part of history that sometimes Many other guns were there, but this one has that moment in time oh. captured right here on the wood. And it's so great that, that there's history, not only these firearms, but so much history here at the National Firearms Museum. So how can folks get more information and come out here and see this, this history right here? We say come to the uh, museum website. I think uh, www.nramuseum.com is one of those places. You can go, you can see this gun there thanks to the internet. It's a chance to see thousands of guns every day, every night. Why not? 
Uh, awesome. And if you get a chance here in Fairfax, stop by the museum as well. It, it's just so full of treasures and great stories. And, and guys like you, Doug, to, to, you're, you're wandering the halls here to tell these great stories to everyone. We appreciate you taking some time and being here with us on the Curator's Corner. Thank you, sir. Thank you.